Hey everyone, and welcome to the best of three Call of Duty esports podcast. I'm your host, Josh. Salvation's elite to my right is Bash underscore BO3 Sam, and to our farthest right, per use, is Rex, Shady, <laughs> Nero, and guys, another week of wild news in the competitive Call of Duty scene. Some rosters have been confirmed. We had a, an alpha sprung on us last week for Black Ops Cold War and a lot more to talk about, obviously, when it comes to uh, maybe some skill-based matchmaking, some PS5 was mm. was announced, wow. and a lot more. Before we get into any of it, I've got to ask, guys, what is going on? Josh, I am feeling like Mario just discovered his peach and she was running away into Bowser's castle, but he said, no, come back here. I'm saving your life before you even enter that castle. And we can live forever and have a happy family and have babies. And we'll call them Baby Mario and Baby Luigi after my brother, because I love my brother, Luigi Giuseppe, brother. Wow. Wow. Inspiring. Was there any stuff. Goombas in there? Any Goombas with, with Peach in there? I don't know. I'm a little scared. But Sam, how you doing? <laughs> doing good. Doing yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. That's a great metaphor there. I love that. Yeah, it is exciting. But uh, baby Mario, I'm doing great as well, guys. You know, I don't ask. I don't ask how I'm doing very often, but I'm yeah. doing well. You're doing good. I'm doing good. Doing good. I am. Good. But uh, guys, we got a lot of Call of Duty to talk about this week, man. I'm excited. Like I said, it's Twitter, Savage Elite, Bash Scorpio Three, Rex Shady Nero, and you can listen to the podcast where podcasts can be listened. Twitch. Wait, not Twitch. Spotify, Apple Podcast, nah. YouTube. Maybe that was a teaser for one day. I don't know. Who knows? Twitch podcast? What? Maybe. But uh, we do like reading some reviews on Apple Podcasts. We're going to read one today. We have one from Tanty CDL. Uh. <sighs> Says, awesome. Five stars. All these dudes are super knowledgeable on the competitive scene. Always up to date content. I listen via audio. So I don't know who is who is who. But one of them has a hilarious rat laugh, and I recently discovered that Shady Nero doesn't really have eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> he does have eyebrows, man. I, he I does. Right here, bro. They're just blonde, man. It's tough. Look at, look at those oh, eyebrows. Oh my goodness! Look, look at, at them eyebrows. Oh, oh, oh the eyeball. Oh my word! <laughs> we just saw the white of your eyes, bro. Wow, I am scared. Wow. Oh my goodness! Jeez. Starting off with some Halloween spooky oh, thriller today, gosh. but uh, <laughs> a lot of comedy to talk about today, guys. And I could not be more excited. Um, man, I mean. You just ready to get into the news? I mean, let's get right into it. Let's get into it. The Call of Duty News of the Week. Yo! Whoa! Baby! Wow! <laughs> get, 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 get. <laughs> Get yourself a on crazy stage, train bro. today, boys and girls. <laughs> we are ready. I mean, my word, a lot to talk about. First of all, the PS5 was officially revealed. Whoa. And uh, I mean, basically, PS5, we all know the prices. We've probably seen it by now. You know, interesting to see what we're, what we're going to be doing here. But PS5, the non digital di di digital edition. <laughs> Holy wow. You sound like me over here. I bro. know. Wow. Yikes. <laughs> Uh, four ninety nine, but the digital edition is only three ninety nine, which is an insane price for a brand new console. Pretty really dope. Good. Pretty dope. Do you want really to explain and, the uh, difference between the two consoles? I mean, the digital edition just has no disc drive, so uh, slice no it discs. right down. Let's a disc drive, hundred dollars. Yeah, right. that's, a, that's an that's expensive. Crazy. It's an expensive disc it drive. Is. It is. I, it's hard to imagine. That's the only thing that like uh, was cut. It is weird, but yeah. you know somehow that. Okay. That's how you justify it, I guess, yep. with the cross-platform. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm tempted by the digital edition. I was originally just going to plan on – I thought it was going to be 500 for the digital. Mm -hmm. um, and I was originally just going to plan on buying a new computer, probably, just going to go in and make that happen. But I don't know. The $400 price tag for a digital PS4 is tempting. Yeah. Where, where are you guys at with it? Rex? I mean, I've always been a PC guy. Uh, I started out playing on Xbox, and I loved Xbox playing Halo. And then once – Black Ops 3 hit, or maybe even World War 2, I started playing on the PlayStation. Um, I mean, it's it's a debate. You get you get your uh, titles, exclusives to the PlayStation, but that's yeah, really that all is... it offers at this point in my mind. It's just the exclusives it gets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what's interesting? I think we all three here have a preferred difference. Different. Yeah, your Xbox on PS4, Rex's PC. Yeah. 
So, We're kind of all over the place here, man. Yeah, the cross good. play comes in clutch for us. Good it really does. Yes. It is. It is real clutch. That's, that was the big blessing yeah. earlier this year. But, I mean, yeah, I agree with you, Rex. Like, kind of like exclusivity is kind of the X factor. I mean, my thought was originally was just don't buy the PS4 when it launches. Buy it, like, next summer or, PS5. like, the end of next – Or I'm sorry, the PS5. PS5. You know, when it launches, buy it in the summer, buy mm-hmm. it in the fall, something like that. Yeah. And then when the games start rolling out that mm-hmm. are actually exclusive, yeah. that's when you capitalize on that. But yeah. – I don't know, man. Like I said, the price tag is pretty nice. Absolutely. Um, all mm-hmm. things considered. And like, I mean, your $400 PS4 is going to perform like $800,000, $900,000 PC probably. So it's like... <laughs> $900,000? No, I don't. Eight, <laughs> 900, 800, 900, comma, thousand, thousand. PC. <laughs> $900,000 PC. I get $900,000 PC, you know. <laughs> You can buy a beach house. You can buy this PC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which one do you want? Which I don't one do you know. Want? Um, uh, PC, please. Yes. Yeah. yeah thank absolutely. You. Now, but uh, yeah, that, that was interesting news to say the least. Yeah, that was and cool. I mean, I think a lot of people are kind of in that boat. PC, Xbox. If you're in, if you were in a recommendation where like you could maybe afford the PC, but it would be stretching it versus mm-hmm. like buying the PS4 and having cash remaining. PS5. Like, where would or, oh my word the ps5 yeah, yeah. I mean, i'm gonna be caught with that yeah, for a while okay but uh where would you be at at that line if it was like a really tight money situation yeah. man yeah if if it's tight i feel like because oh, man it's and if hard. you're not streaming i feel like that's also an x yeah. factor as well yeah if you're not streaming like you would think right in the right now if if, if money's tight you'd want to go with a ps5 right but the thing with pc is like once you get it you can upgrade individual parts Right. So, like so in the, the long term, it's cheaper. Long term, it's cheaper. Well, obviously. Made, well you you can make some arguments and like you know, you know like like long term. I spent four hundred dollars on my PS4 seven years ago and still mm-hmm. have it. Yeah. And then like you get you know into arguments of that PC will part perform better later on too. You you know the the PS5 parts are solid or, right. or like they're you can't change them. So yeah, it's 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 always a debate. At the end of the day, it's preferred. Um, but like. You, you can also make an argument too, like you're going to need a better monitor too, with the new, you know, with with PC yeah. too. and then there's you know, the controller so debate. Controller. Like, all right, I can use a cheap controller I already have on PC. I'd have to buy a new controller. Mm-hmm. Like if you already have a scuff on PC for like for any system, you can mm-hmm. use it on PC, yeah. not on a PS5. So yeah. like there are those debates as well. Yeah. And then like PlayStation Plus. So there are the insin like the incendiary costs of owning mm-hmm. a PS5. Yeah. So I can get that. Like I would have no problem with somebody buying a PC, and mm-hmm. you can generally get games cheaper on PC than you can on yeah. PlayStation. For sure. Um, with Steam and with all of the other websites. You so can buy many more games in general on PC. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, I see both sides. If someone's tight for cash, I would recommend the PS4 Digital mm-hmm. Edition. Just go for the $400. PS5. Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> the PS5. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I, I want that. So, yeah. um, the other – I actually just want to mention this real quick because I thought it was really, really interesting. Today, Xbox – well, a.k.a. Microsoft mm-hmm. bought – the the parent company of Bethesda. Mm-hmm. I know this is, this is not related to COD, so I t- we want to keep it short. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was really really interesting with the kind of the whole PlayStation debate as a whole. Mm-hmm. I mean, what are your initial reaction? They bought it for seven and a half billion dollars. That's, that's a lot insane. of money. That's a, that's a lot. That's of insane. Money. Like put that in perspective. Minecraft was bought for two and a half billion by Microsoft, which was huge. And that's My- a huge win. Yeah. I mean, you have to imagine Bethesda has something in the pipeline already that made Microsoft willing to make that investment. Yeah, it's like Skyrim or... That is now Microsoft exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you only be able to play it on Microsoft Store on PC or on Xbox. And then Mm. I think, too, like, they're they're hoping that that announcement would bring a lot of people to to Game Pass as well. Yeah. Knowing they're going to have all the Bethesda games on Game Pass, all the Fallouts, you know, Doom, all that stuff. So, I'm guessing they're, they're hoping for that, you know, that new Skyrim, whatever it is, you know, kind of explosive to Microsoft and also Game Pass sales are probably are yeah. to shoot through the roof now. Or maybe like new like Fallout DLC or yeah. something. Yeah. Because obviously Whatever it's a long is. time for a new Fallout game. But yeah. yeah so anyway, we, we just wanted to mention that real quick. That's yeah. some like crazy gaming news. Just a lot of money. Like that's, I mean, that, that's a huge acquire. Like, yeah. Wow. Seven and a half billion. That's nuts. But uh, the real news today that I think we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about today is the article on the CDL bubble. Yeah. Esports Observer, a website news art, a website news or an esports website mm-hmm. that covers both mostly news. Um, put out an article saying that from their sources, we don't really know how reliable this is, but from their sources, they said that they've heard from multiple sources that the CDL is very heavily considering doing a bubble for next season, which mm-hmm. is something we've obviously talked about. I mean, 
where are you at with it? Toronto Ultras, um, kind of like you know their general manager and right, uh, yeah. their their owner basically are like this is this is dumb. It's not true. It's not going to happen, or like it's just not logical. Mm-hmm. Um, they seemed very anti it and anti that it was even actually a thing, like a even like a proposal. That's strange to me, honestly. But on the eavesdrop, mm-hmm. Hastro said last week that you know the CDL was considering options with a bubble. Like right. he literally said, the league is working hard to figure out what we can do next year to potentially create the bubble environment or get away with doing a few land events or a land tournaments with the right safety precautions. So like, I mean, that just guarantees that at least there was some, some conversation, some talk or something. Right? Um, but now, since it's kind of been in the news today, where are you at with the bubble? Do you think it's possible? And of- do you want it? Rex? I mean, yes, I want it. It's land. Why would I not want it? Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, the only people who, I mean, I'm not affected by them being in a bubble. The only thing, it's only good for us, like as viewers, because they're now on land. Um, yeah, for, well, trans- for Toronto competitive Ultra, integrity. Yeah, and competitive integrity. Toronto Ultra has always been that weird team. It, you know, yeah. there's always those things where it's like none of their players can leave Toronto, and you know all that stuff. And now yep. they're against the bubble, which means their players would have to leave Toronto. And I'm so confused why they're so like gripping on that idea that their players have to live there. Um, mm. This seems like they're really strict yeah. about it, and he's like almost mad that there's good t- thoughts of being a bubble. It's like, he must really like Toronto and wants everybody else to love it as much as they do. Yeah. Um, yeah, because so Skump, Skump went off, and he mm-hmm. was like, like, this is so stupid. Mm-hmm. But like, I feel like, I don't know, before we go on that, I mean, what were your thoughts, Sam? Because yeah, I want to no, talk I, more about that. I think it is possible, and I, I, I obviously do want it, but I think there does need to be a system where it's not every team at one time. Like, these guys aren't in a position to, like, live there for months. You, you know what I mean? Like, right. It, it should no be, one's able to right it now. It should be, like, in waves, right? Um, See, that's what, I, that's what I think we need to talk about, how the format works. Yeah. I agree. Because, yeah. like, I'm sure Skump is like, I'm, I'm going to live here for six months of my life. Yeah, no chance. And he's like, no way. I'm not which, moving to Vegas for four or five months. Yeah, so, like, which... I would agree with that. That would be terrible, so right? So yeah, I I do think there should be some sort of like at least try it, right? Um, but yeah, we so, we get, get into the format. Yeah, so like Scum was ripping on it, and like again, mm-hmm. yeah, the co-owner of the Ultra was like, "Yeah, I agree. Whoever leaked this information was full of crap, mm-hmm. aka." But I don't know. But like at the end of the day, I think you agree. The format is what's key here, and like think about it: the CWL in Columbus was doing this basically mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. almost all things considered was basically doing a bubble mm-hmm. they would all live in the same apartments they would get brought in by a mlg van to the event mm-hmm. like it was basically a bubble yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, they had no problem with that so like why are we having a big mm-hmm. problem with the bubble yeah because like it was every two weeks right they would yeah, they were there for the- about two weeks so my thought would be that you have about like a week of quarantine period when you get there so like there's like a incoming people like area that they stay Mm -hmm. and then they move to a different place for two weeks where they stay there and they're getting tested obviously during that quarantine period yeah you know and then you and that's that's kind of how you do it and you sift you sift people out every three weeks or so Mm -hmm. right like you have you have let's say you have out of the 12 teams four are there at a time Mm -hmm. and then you have four teams and you maybe have like two different comp. You have two different apartment complexes, mm-hmm. and there's the people who were there who just got there, and there's people that are already there, and you have to have a week of being there before you can actually play, and you have to keep getting tested and stuff. Yeah, like that. Could, I feel like that'd be possible, yeah. right? Possible. Mm-hmm. You know, I would assume the money's there to do that kind of thing, and, and you're only there for three weeks. Like yeah. that's not that bad. Because then, because you got you got to get into like how would the format work with like. So we're talking about like like divisions, as in like. We're having like a two division, like yeah. I mean, you you probably go there like three times. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. So then you're playing all the teams. So you have like three different pools where you're kind of like mixing all the teams together, basically. Because then, like, we're like we're we're getting into basically league matches, then, right? Probably. Pretty much. Yeah. Which I like that. So yeah. I mean, I'm not like hyped about it. I again, I'm on the fence. I mean, you know, would you? Let's let's say there's two options. There's an option where we actually have a lot of servers. The connection's pretty good online at this point. Mm-hmm. Like they 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 added a lot of servers. They added a Denver server. They added a 
a, a Kansas City server. They added a Nashville server. They, you know, like they added a lot of servers to help balance the connection. And online actually worked pretty well. Mm-hmm. I mean, realistically, do you think it's more just like where you're at with like the debate than at that point? I mean, everyone's moving to Dallas anyways, it seems like. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, you can't beat the bubble land. Like you just like there's just no beating that. And as a viewer, that's is what I want to see. Yeah. Like, competitive Plus, like, integrity and everything. Like people were saying this year was like not a real year. It was online, yada yada. It's like, well, if that's the case, then don't make it online. Go to land. Like, and, it's like you like <laughs> So don't we'll, complain we'll, and then, you know. We'll never get like there are certain people that will never think that the league is really official until it's on land, right? Like Mm-hmm. There's certain competitors that are, are just will not, not be happy until it's on land. Yeah. So it's so it's kind of like I don't know if you want it to feel more official, but obviously we have the, the technology to do all online. Like yeah, we did it this past you know year. You, we can argue that it wasn't really good, but oh it's man, it's hard though. Like at, like at least give us at least give us champs. Right, I oh, think that's man. very likely. Like, I think at it's least very give us likely. The playoffs and champs in the bubble, at least. I mean, mm-hmm. I have a lot of confidence that we're going to get at least two or three land tournaments next mm-hmm. year, and if it's probably near the end of the year, like mm-hmm. in the summer, like June, July, August, yeah. we get like two tournaments or three tournaments, and then champs, mm-hmm. um, something like that. So I'm pretty confident in that. But like, yeah, I just don't know. I mean, again, I would be very excited about a bubble. I get the players' hesitation, but if there's a way where they only have to be there for like two to three weeks, like, you know, 17-ish days or so, like, Mm -hmm. that's not that bad, right? That's not that bad. So it's like, uh, I don't know. I think that's pretty awesome and we'll be pretty hyped about a bubble and the content would be amazing. Oh, it'd be so Mm. cool. Like, you get like reality TV shows. I think someone like, I think it was Method or someone said like, when you get like a CDL reality TV show. Oh, yeah. It'd be incredible. Amazing. Like, (laughs) the the content would be incredible and I think the upside for the league to brand itself and like not limit its upside as an organ as like a league heading into its second season when they really need to like show probably some big time growth next year Mm -hmm. and like, they're trying to get expansion teams and the expansion teams want to see online or land play. Yeah. Like, I think there's a lot of other a lot of other things that play here for organizations. I mean, like, I can see why, like, maybe someone like Paris or Toronto or maybe like Seattle wouldn't want to play on land because of like just like just I don't know. I just feel like those types of organizations aren't as keen to it. Yeah. But like Mm -hmm. the Hectors of the world and like the teams who are going to be living in the Dallas area are like, dude, this would be amazing, I feel like. And um, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like. I'm all about it. Let's have it happen. If there's mm-hmm. an easy, safe way to do it where it's not too crazy for the players. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. I mean, anything else with the, with the bubble, any other, any other ways that could play out? Like let's say, let's say they do do a bubble. All right. Is there any way that you could think of like a format that could work well besides just league play? Is there any way to do it in a different way? Like, does anything come to mind that way? Because I mean, obviously, like, league play is fine and all, but I'd rather not just have it be league play. Hmm. I like to I see mean, some more tournaments. S- still do, like, the tournament format with it, right? I mean, it's just a weekend, but they're there for the week, so then you just do the tournament on the weekend like you normally would, and then the next weekend... Uh, I mean, it depends how many teams are there. You'd have to have the same teams again for the next weekend, so, like, it almost kind of ruined the point of the bubble. Unless yeah, you just exactly. run two tournaments with the same exact teams again but that seems dumb yeah i feel like you have to do league play yeah <clears throat> and you play like two matches you or, know or in your or three matches in your time there what is there a way to like organize the teams that rotate out so like each team that like goes there is there for two like i don't know how you could like space it out so like after this tournament these two teams leave these two teams come in and then like the next tournament is like with that or like oh, it's possible. And then two so like half teams the teams leave are new every and time. Two, yeah, so like you bring in another like you like don't have to do a full like out and in. It's just kind of like two of the teams leave and it's just like I don't know how to even work. Yeah, this I mean like, like no rotation. no yeah, in a world where like yeah, you're sitting out every weekend you're having a tournament mm-hmm. every single weekend and it's yeah like every every week four new teams are coming. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And. There's that quarantine period, so like at any at any given time, 
Do you basically have like, well, how would that, how would that work? You'd have, you'd have to quarantine for a certain amount of days Mm -hmm. and then head into the, then head into the bubble, be there for two weeks, then leave. But then when would you have to come back? Then maybe you take a time off. I don't know. It would I mean, be you'd definitely have to, like weird. go to like the back of the list again, and then like you wait for a while, and then tell you're called back up to go in for the next. Yeah, tournament. I mean, I yeah, that's weird. I don't know. It, it would make more sense if you had six teams there at a time, because then it would be like three, three and three, and you you could probably do like a four week rotation of that. Mm. Right. Um. But with twelve, if you're trying to have like eight there at once, then there's not yeah. very much time for days, weeks off. Yeah. So it does get a little messy. Yeah, I feel like the league play is just the best format there, just to keep it simple. Yeah, probably. Um, but which is a little, would be a little disappointing. I think the only that'd be the biggest negative of league play. Um, but man, I am itching for some land, land I know. cod to watch. Jeez. Yeah. And seeing the players being able to yell at each other from across the studio. I mean, like, I know. Like the pro league was still lit in Columbus with no fans there. Mm-hmm. Like I loved watching it. Yeah. Um, because you get to see those players there in person talking to each other across the stage or whatever. And I, it was mm-hmm. awesome. I loved it. So yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think either way it makes sense. We'll definitely talk more about the bubble if we hear more information about it in the coming few days or next up into next week. Mm-hmm. But for now, let's leave it at that. Let's do it. The last thing I wanted to mention inside the news section before we head into Ross for Mania was the throwback tournament that was happening early like today as of like right now as we're mm-hmm. currently recording we're yeah. late late uh, monday night here yeah um it's nearly the finals but yeah tst slash hitch slash cmg throwing black ops 4 throwback tournament and they've got more throwbacks lined up over the next few weeks which is going to be a blast and like i don't know about you guys i've had an absolute blast watching this throwback mm-hmm. right now with some of these teams that have kind of formed with like the the quote-unquote reunited yeah. squad mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh like dashy and hook and illy and and uh cell so. and everyone playing together and mm-hmm. like that was a fun team and so uh yeah there's some really really cool teams there and then of course parasite <laughs> with his <laughs> this is the most parasite thing ever man he like brings his three random dudes who like no pr- not even the pros had heard of like mm-hmm. cell was like who are these guys mm-hmm. and parasites bring them out of nowhere and apparently they're like 17 year old kids yeah. who have never played modern war they never even played modern warfare they just mm-hmm. stayed on bo4 mm-hmm. and they bring him into the bo4 brain. tournament and just has him getting carried by these yeah. three bo4 all-stars they knew this day was coming <laughs> they knew this yeah. day was they coming the it. throwback bo4 tournament they've been waiting for this moment <laughs> and parasite just of course goes sweaty af and tries to make it happen classic parasite but uh they're have they're having a lot of success right now so yeah fun to watch they're in the grand you, you finals absolutely insane look at that you I'm know who'd have thought who'd have thought yeah but uh i don't know any other thoughts on the on the throwbacks i mean it's i love the community support like it's great and it, yeah it's, it's, it's really cool to see 4v4 on black house 4 just to see like what it could have played like and 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 that kind of thing mm-hmm. but um yeah i you, you know i like really hope for like more of these and it's, it's really fun seeing like the different teams form too and just seeing like what possibilities could happen chemistry wise and that kind of thing so yeah it was fun i mean i think what's fun about it is like really i really seen that 4v4 play out on black ops 4 and like the uh it i think it encourages me like seeing how well 4v4 still plays like even in like like hard point on hacienda Mm -hmm. you know like a pretty big map all things considered but 4v4 still works pretty well on it and Mm -hmm. uh that i mean that's encouraging i think heading into cold war with how the maps might have to play out and everything Mm -hmm. else so um yeah i'm excited Mm -hmm. yeah but uh all righty all things considered time for roster mania oh (sighs) i don't know if this drop works we'll see what happens do it Oh, that's hot. That's hot. So, which roster is the hottest roster out of the gate, boys? We're talking the hottest (laughs) roster mania news. That's funny. That's got to continue to spin these these drops to work the right way. (laughs) That's a good segue. But, uh, man, I think off the rip, Paris... Like, 
wh- what no is happening? No one knows. No one knows. No one knows on. what's happening with Paris. So obviously, we've seen some of the cryptic tweets from CDL Intel. Shout out CDL Intel. No free shout outs. And uh, you know, he's talking about how how Paris is like. What are they doing? Like, what is Paris doing? Nobody knows. And uh, Waskin is. It seems like they're getting a little desperate. I know. Like he's tweeting at Paris, like, "Yo, I will play I for know. free." It's Hit just so weird, up. though. Like, I, there's no way that's tr- like, there's no way he's playing for free. I, I just don't believe that. <laughs> well, well, sure. N- yeah, but like, how? I I don't get how they're in this spot in the first place. I guess I don't know. It just they seem so talented. They seem like they've been. I don't know. I it just mind blowing to me that they're in this position. Yeah, unfortunately, but it is wild. It is wild. I mean, yeah. with Paris's roster, I mean, what are your thoughts with it at this point? You know. Who would be like your dream squad for Paris to pick up? Like if if we we're looking at these rosters, I mean, it seems like you know Hydra was linked there for a while. We saw like mm-hmm. Pred linked there for a while. Maybe teaming with like Dens or Kismet again, or who yeah. knows what's gonna happen with that. And uh, you know, Brezzy's been linked there as well. I mean, what would you want to see? Who would be your dream roster at this point with guys who are like currently free agents that aren't really finding a team? I think it'd be really, really interesting. Do you have I, one in mind? Obviously, I think Wesken scraps would be so sick. Keep them, keep them in the league. Keep I, them, keep the duo together. I, I think they're so good for the league. There's so mm. much passion there between those two. You know, like there's there's a storyline behind them. Yeah. Um, that that's huge. So would you just go? Would you just go like like Wesken scraps and just do the Brezzy Hydra, the the English Paris duos, and just? I mean, that would be a good one. Um. Cause yeah, cause really like you just need Weskins on 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 AR. Maybe you bring like like Temp and Temp gosh. Temp scraps Weskin and Jerd Jerd Z stays. I I probably prefer Z. What about a Sim? Like a Sim. That would be interesting. Temp scraps Weskin. You just have like bunch of fast paced players and that'd be really interesting because a Sim was. Pretty decent in Black Ops Four, was he not? Yeah, he was. He was really mm-hmm. good. I don't know how friendly they are good. with each other. Like we know that's right. kind that's of like a thing. <laughs> yeah. Is right. that like the Europeans and the NA? They typically don't really go to like they don't really team up with each other. No, I mean, look what happened with Zero on NYSL. So like, were they on, on the phase. same fr- on phase? The, the same phase. So like that might be a good pairing. I mean, yeah, I feel like Scraps and Wuskins are probably a little bit more connected to the NAC. Yeah, they definitely yeah, are. True. But I think if it goes Scraps, Wuskins, Paris could go like the more safer route because they want to be known as more of like a legitimate team, I guess, and pick yeah. up like Temp or ASIM, like pros yeah. that are going to be like, at least get them to like kind of a standard middle of the pack position, if not yeah. higher. Or they take the risk and pick up two young gunners with Scraps and Wuskins. But I think Scraps yeah. wasn't kind of like the top pick for that. Yeah, but, I, mean, I saw uh, some people theorizing Parasite, like uh, like I some weird, it. some mm. weird like Parasite Hydra Brezzy and like. So I saw on, on Reddit someone said Jimbo because Jimbo can speak some French. Jimbo. That'd be so. And interesting. so you get that squad, but I'd I'd be shocked if that happened with Jimbo and Haggy. But man, here's just... the thing, man. It's like Paris says they have no idea what they're doing, so it's like. We have to imagine Paris has reached out to people at this point, but they weren't Scraps and Wuskins because they've been on Twitter complaining this whole time. Yeah, These so other they haven't pros been reaching out to them. Have been complaining about it, so apparently they're not reaching out to them. I mean, so, obviously Paris is a, they're, they're 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 cheap. Obviously, like of course. their last roster was minimum minimum wage roster guys, yeah. like fifty k a year. Yeah, it's just oh man, I, yeah. So it's like I don't know why you wouldn't go for Scraps and Wuskins. Like that would be. Such like an like it's big names a branding too like like Wuskins was by the fans a top ten player oh, in Modern yeah. Warfare like mm-hmm. so the fans would be hyped about that they're always protecting him when he was sniping like he brought hype like it it, it, just, it seems like a good move both for your roster that but also for your brand too like, but will yeah, they do it for that minimum payment they sell to do it for free but come on now yeah that's a good point because last year they were making bank. We we they had to have been scraps and Wuskin, they had to have been making at least pretty big money. I mean, we heard about the that buyout that scraps had with Phase. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess I feel like they would be willing to take take a hit. Like those play, two seem play like, in the pro league. Those two seem like like hardcore competitors. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like, I agree. 
they're not I like I think Scraps wants a championship so bad. Like a world championship so bad. Yeah. Mm. I, you know, I don't know. I I mean I, Yeah. Yeah. It it's it just mind boggling, honestly. <laughs> it, it really is. So I mean, if, these reti- if these like pros who are being kind of sent back to challengers, like none of them get picked up with this Paris team, then Paris, I think, is taking a pretty big risk on taking yeah, on like, unknown names. Yeah, they're even though like Pred, Hydra, yeah, even I Brezzy, like, even though Brezzy was a beast in BO4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I assume these players, maybe they won't take that 50K, and that's why they're not being picked up by Paris. Um, then you, you, know, you can't blame Paris for that. But we don't know if that's happening True. or not. But I don't know, if I was Paris, I'd be picking up guys that at least can get me middle of the pack, give me some more like gravitas in the scene, and then start making like risk that gravitas. Plays. Gravitas. That's what I mean. That's what I would do. Yeah, I, I know. That's that's the biggest thing. Is just like it doesn't feel like Paris wants to spend any money, mm-hmm. and they really want to have at least some European influence on their team. Yeah. But like. At that point, then, if Scraps and Weskin really are willing to play mm-hmm. for, you know, a minimum wage type salary, like, what, why would you not? That's true. At mm-hmm. that point. Yeah. And again, like, Temp is out there. You got God Rex out there. You've got, you know, Slack. veterans. Like, yeah, Slacked and uh, Jerd, Zed, you know, who are still looking for teams. And then, like, even, and then main ARs like Mox and Chino. Are out there too rated dens like there's some really good players out there man mm-hmm. and if they can't put together a competitive team out of those guys and like yeah. bruh yeah that's... like what in the world i mean so it's honestly the roster that i'm most excited to hear about because if they like if they haven't got nothing now it's like then they're gonna come ass with something that like no one is predicting right yeah that's kind of my yeah. hope is that it's just names we've never even like they're just oh, and players. Maybe it's just the singularity team or the war team or you know four of them. But oh, man, yeah. that would be crazy. That's what I mean. Yeah, they have they have by far the most variables. I mean, I would expect my dream roster would be Weskin, Scrap, Temp, probably a Sim at that point. Would that be that'd, that'd be, be a really pretty cool fun team. roster? It, it would be because like I feel like at that point those guys are all like they know they're kind of like last picks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, I I thought they could like rally together and make something happen. I think I so. I don't know. It'd be cool. It'd be a cool storyline. Yeah. 100% would be a cool storyline. So, so I'd be definitely excited to see it. I mean, any other thoughts with Paris? Is there is there a player you're keeping your eye on that you really hope? Like, what's the one guy you're like, they need to be to, they need to be on Paris? Weskin. Weskin? Weskin. Rex, who's Paris. yours? I mean, yeah, you think Weskin Scraps would end up somewhere. Yeah, that makes sense. So the next piece of news, Arcides has was officially announced to phase. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Finally, I mean, again, Long time coming. We've we've all seen it. We've all foreseen it for yep. quite a while now. But that roster is going to be cracked. That's going to be such a good roster. It's going to be oh such a good God. roster. I mean, there's no way this team is bad. There's yeah. no way. It, it's a zero percent chance this team is bad. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> like like seeing a BZ simp and RC's teaming again today mm-hmm. on uh, in this throwback tournament was just like holy cow they are they are such a good team oh, man they're gonna be so good and uh, bringing that back from E United and yep. adding Stellium with that too and again it's interesting it is interesting because again we've heard the RCD is the reason why he left he wants to play main AR yes so you know sells back to flexing which. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's probably what he wants to do, though. I think all things considered, that team's going to be a weld oil machine. Yeah. Right? You would think. Yeah. forward to it? You would think. But, I mean, the leadership aspect of it all, I have yeah. questions. But it, they'll be good no matter what. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. RC just brings that, like, incredibly cracked, like, raw talent. And just. But, mm-hmm. but then also, like, that, like, He's so vocal. So vocal too. So yeah. he commands the the the, the map yeah. really really well as a like, main AR. It's probably one of his biggest strengths as a player. Like like where FaZe may have lacked in Modern Warfare, I think RC is bringing that to the table. Was that sound voice? Yeah. That really like the the voice. Yeah. So like mm. it's it seems like this it'll be hard for this team to fail, but obviously it can happen. Like you you know chemistry might not be there as it once was you know on the United. So Yeah. Yeah. You know, We'll see, but yeah, that's going to be a disgusting team. Oh, for I mean, sure. 
I mean, we'll talk a lot more about them in the coming few weeks when we're like really ranking all of these teams Mm -hmm. moving forward when we get more official announcements. But speaking of official announcements, the Minnesota Rocker, their roster we've been we kind of piecing together the past few weeks was also officially announced right after our podcast Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Again, that roster accuracy attached the duo, you know, stays the the duo of New Mm -hmm. York comes to Minnesota. Then we've got Priesta and Major Maniac, the duo from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Coming together really is yeah, that's really interesting. But most people would say that Attach and Priesta are the duo, yeah. truly. <laughs> and so it's a very interesting team. I th- I'll spill my opinion first. I yeah, feel like people are sleeping on Major Maniac a little bit. I think so because too. they only see him as a main AR. But like, he was a beast in Bo4. Like people, I, it's like people mm-hmm. are so quickly forgetting how good yep. he was in Bo4 flexing. Yep. I don't know. Immediate yep. thoughts on the officially announced team Rex. Fire away. This seems just like an odd compilation of people on a team that that's vibes are high. The vibes you would think will be high, but maybe it's going to be at a point where it's almost like too high or they're having like they're not taking it seriously enough almost maybe. I don't, I don't know, know, man. There's like something like I don't see them being a championship caliber team necessarily. It's just something is not quite right there for me, mm. but I can't quite put a pin on it. But just like that winning mentality, I guess. I don't, I don't Man, know. I don't know, bro. I feel like. I Sam. always look to like <laughs> leaders on these teams. Even that phase I mean, roster. What is me, the leader, though. I'm so used to like clear cut, like your leaders. You got Slasher, Crim6, Clayster. I mean, even like Scum Formal, you could say, are in that boat, too. And then. Man. It's just aches, even. But this is like. I don't know. Accuracy I like is, would I mean, be that I get, guy. I get that you're low on accuracy. I mean, I am low on. I, I'm not gonna lie. I am low on accuracy. I don't think he's as great as some people kind of try and make him out to be. I mean, again, he but, was incredible in World War II, mm-hmm. and yeah, uh, was. But you know, so when he broke out on TK, and, yeah. right, of course. And but like at the end of the day, you know, we're in Bo Four, sure he wasn't like a star, but like going back to Four Before, I'm I'm expecting accuracy to be just fine. Sam, what do you thought? Yeah, I I didn't think it would be attach and accuracy as like yeah. the pairing from from that New York. I don't know. I just didn't. I mean, Zuma would be the obvious one. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I am excited for this team. Uh, just for you know, like Priest and Zuma. That that's gonna be really fun to see them together, right? Priest and attach. Yeah. Pri- what I say? You said Zuma. Zuma. Yeah, I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah. Priest and attach. <laughs> <laughs> Mind fart. Priest and Attach would be a lot of fun to see them together. Oh, yeah, back reunited. It's like, that's yeah. dope. That's and dope. And, like, I, I am, I totally agree with you about Major Maniac. Like, I think people forget how he was a beast in S&D this Black whole season. Yeah, like, people, like, Black Ops 4, he was, re- he was good. So. And it's like, we're under, like, he had, like, a 1.15 or something this mm-hmm. year on the season. And, yeah. like, in S&D, he was really, really good. Yeah. So, I, I honestly think this team could make some serious waves. Um, Accuracy, <sighs> for me... I, I will say accuracy does need to do some proving like yeah y- gotta you know, prove it to you you know like the last two years she just hasn't you no know, I, I I haven't seen much but for can I be last, honest too? the last four before game he was good yeah go ahead also like attach he's good but it's never been quite there for me well in the past Priesta, two years. Priest's last year was, argue, you know, he's on the bottom yeah, end the of thing. that phase team. He was, uh, I don't know what was going with him mentally, but he wasn't, it just like wasn't exactly playing as great as you would think what Priest would play. I'm right? sitting up for this. And the then, thing is about both those guys, Priest and Attach had to play like support roles on both their teams the past two years, especially mm-hmm. last year. Well, and one of them like, have to do it this year. But in four v four, it's different. You can just have two. You don't. You don't. You don't necessarily have like the support or the entry guy in four v four. The roles play a lot different. You got the two main slaying subs. Then mm-hmm. you've got the flex, who like generally will like play inside hill or do something along those lines. And, and the flex does a lot more of the dirty work. Major maniac. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the main AR anchoring, rotating early, controlling the lines of sight. I think the team is built well. And like and 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 attach hasn't had to be the main slayer the past two years. You know, but like this, I think heading into 4v4, and same with Priesta. I mean, this last year, he did not need to be the main slayer. And in BO4, Priesta was the entry player, SOG entry. So it's like, at the end of the day, I think this team could really, really, really slay out. 
I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't, there's just like something missing with it for me. It's very odd. Maybe like the pacing will seem weird. Actually, he's notoriously pretty slow. Attach and priest. I don't. But they are veterans. Yeah, I mean, they could do something. I see middle of the pack here. Maybe upper middle of the pack. Maybe, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I could see it not doing great. I, I don't know. Not as well. I don't know. For sure. I mean, after playing the Cold War Alpha, like the game's slower. Like it's not. It's not modern warfare like right. just the movement the movement itself is it's not going to allow you to be yeah k racked yeah <laughs> like and I may be modern forgetting. warfare was i may be forgetting what 4v4 was like maybe a little bit and i'm not taking that into yeah. account so much but like i just feel like that the skill drop i don't think it's going to drop off like that much like simp is still going to be amazing a busy still going to be amazing St- like they're these players that were amazing in modern warfare were, are probably going to carry over fairly well into 4v4 you would yeah. hope but maybe not. I don't like. I can't say for sure. Maybe not. But I think they would. But right. I mean, especially if these slide cancel patches come in, like I think, like they're supposed to, with how the, this alpha played out with heading into the beta into the game itself. Like it doesn't feel like it's going to be a fast, fast paced game, especially mm-hmm. in four v four. It's. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to play more like a like a. It's hard to say I W, but like, like I W obviously was fast because of the mm-hmm. movement mm-hmm. style. But like, you know. It wasn't as fast as BO3, mm-hmm. you know? So, like, it, it's, like, kind of like that. Obviously, it's going to be faster than World War II. Mm-hmm. So, there is a balance there. But, like, yeah. it, it's going to be significantly slower than than BO4 and and Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare. And that's just not even close. Right. So, um, I think the guys who are good on World War II are it's it's more likely Will it be that, that they bounce back. You think it'll go Not down to World slow, War Two? But those guys had to like play up to the speed of Modern Warfare and BO4. But now mm-hmm. you bring it down just a just a tick, and I mm-hmm. think they're going to be in a pretty good spot mm-hmm. to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I like. I think you're right though. Like I've like, I've like haven't seen 44 in so long. Oh yeah, like, mm-hmm. I like need to like refocus and like rethink about like how how it all works. And we haven't. Well, and we and, and the only 44 we've seen is on the slowest game in COD history, mm-hmm. World War Two. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I mean, and that's what actually slowest... was good at. And I mean, not to back on Chino, but that's what Chino was good at too. Yeah. And then that's it. So it's like, exactly. I don't know. So, so like. I would expect it's gonna play like realistically the movement pacing of the game. Hopefully, it'll be like like Bo2's pacing. Mm-hmm. But like at that point, that you can't base anything off that at that at that point. So it, that's why it is feel, it feels a little bit like uncharted waters, just because mm-hmm. we're heading into four v four with a different pacing style of a game. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of why that's my whole roster mania rant. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah. I feel that. So um, let's talk about New York. Clay officially joined New York. Mm-hmm. Rex, I mean, you kind of been on this. This this then you're on the New York train. <laughs> you do love Clay, so all things considered, this mm-hmm. should be a great thing for you, even though you weren't that excited originally about it. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm feeling a little bit more better about it. I just feel like Clay kind of brings that family vibe. Subliner seemed very corporate, and I don't feel like it didn't really mix so well. Like I don't even know who the owner of like the personal owner of the subliners. I don't know who the general manager is. Like I don't know who these people are with like United, <laughs> Envy, these other teams. I know who that is. It's very like family vibes. But I think Subliners is trying to change that based on how they've been tweeting. Even Clay will go into games. He's like trying to kind of rally the team. They're dropping off diving boards and stuff together, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of like what Clay brings to a team. My concern with it, honestly, I'm okay with Clay and Zuma now. But Mac melts, honestly. I don't know how I feel about it. Really? He, I, I, he might have been a Modern Warfare kid. And I know I was talking about maybe like, you know, it won't change that much. But I'm nervous about him going into 4v4 a little bit. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, I, I feel like what we saw was a pretty fundamentally solid COD pro, all things considered, though, with mm-hmm. with, with, with Mac. Mac. You would think. You would think. But they had the one tournament win. Then after that, it kind of like. Yes, he flashed. Ta- it kind of tapered off a little bit. Agreed to mm-hmm. an extent. I mean. You know, there was a lot more considered. That was also Temp's best tournament. That was probably also Attach's best tournament. Man. So, like, you know, a lot came together at that tournament for them to win. Um, yeah. Is he just kind of like a, a guy who just gets kills all over the map? Or is he someone right. who can actually play with a brain? Yeah, and then obviously the other the other factor, of course, is who's going to be their fourth. Mm-hmm. And that will be a determining factor, too. And that's yeah. going to be, I agree, I think that's a pretty determining factor. And right now, we don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. it's been linked, of course, Pharaoh has been the guy who's been linked yeah. this whole time, but he still 
has said on stream he has no clue mm -hmm. that what's going to happen. It sounds like there's negotiations going on there. And now Clay and company are trying to decide how that's going to play out with contracts and everything else. I'd imagine New York's trying to make it work. But uh, John and Hydra have been linked to New York uh, mm -hmm. by CDL Intel. John would be, oh. My John personal be, preference. Cherry on top of John. I Mine's say, Hydra. Like, if, <laughs> Hydra, really? I like the young guns with Clay. That's what, I mean, someone said in the comments, I think in the last video I saw, but ah, I wish I could remember the quote, but it's just like, he needs to be like that leader of the team that can like do it. Like, you know, people need to be able to mm -hmm. listen to him and like he needs to be able to create the environment for the team. You bring in someone like John, you have John and Zuma and Clay who all, it's like, they're all veterans. Yeah. They're all veterans. True. Clay doesn't Winning have veterans. that sort of like respect to create the mentality of the team. Zuma, I think, can get along with Clay like that and can like for mold sure. into it. But with yeah. one more vet, it kind of destroys that mentality yeah. of the team. Yeah. Not like it's a bad I, mentality. It's just not like. Would you rather have Hydra or I don't Pharaoh? Know. Pharaoh's not bad. I mean, I, I think is I don't know a lot about Hydra, but I'd like to say Hydra because you just, with the team, you gotta you want one all star. And we hope Hydra's kind of like, because I'm nervous about Mac, so I hope Hydra's that all star. You know? I just feel like that's so risky. Mm -hmm. So yeah, risky. Yeah, see, I, I have a sentiment about all the AMs coming from Modern Warfare to this. Mm hmm. You know, I, I don't know. Like, 44 is such a different game. Like, it really yeah, is. That's why I'd way yeah. rather have Pharaoh. But like, Hydra's been around since before. Before. I mean, yes. But, like, Pharaoh, we've seen him succeed on multiple games, 4v4 and 5v5. Yeah. Pharaoh's like, a like, safe pick, for sure. He's, yeah. He's great. It, it's, he is great. It's safe, but it's also, like, uh, <clears throat> it's also pick. a high upside pick. Yes. Like, like, Pharaoh is extremely talented. But then mm -hmm. I feel like John can be in that camp too, though. We haven't I mean, seen John yeah, play again. He was a beast on World War Two. Yeah, he was John was a beast. amazing. But he he wasn't that good at BO4. He did fall off a little bit in in Black Ops Four, and then he hasn't why. played in a whole year. I know. So there but there's a, there's a lot of risk there. There's a reinvigorated spark for John that that's something which, I can respect, and that's like that magic you look mold. for. No, Clay can't mold John. John's you, John you already. You never know. He never know. Yeah, I agree. John's kind of already whatever John is, John is at this point, yeah. right? Same with kind of like Zuma, like then you have too many, you know, talking in the same pool, you know. Yeah, for so, sure. I think another younger mind like Pharaoh. I love Pharaoh's honestly one of my favorite players. So him on that team, I am I like. Oh it. yeah, I think that team would be awesome if they get Pharaoh. But it, it it's leaning. It feels like they might not. I like, know. It I feels like I don't know well, what's Mears going on with the contracts Pharaoh, there. Like crazy. Well, because Florida is just like, what, what's happening with Florida? Oh, like, yeah. oh, speaking of contracts, real quick, I, want, I forgot to mention in our conversation about uh, about the bubble. Mm -hmm. I, I, real quick, I just want to mention this: the contracts are an X factor in that conversation about the bubble. I was going to mention that um, because some contract some contracts have like a stipulation that they will not be required to move mm -hmm. to play for their team. But the contracts might actually have to be reworked because of that wording, and like that could create some hurdles. So that was something I wanted to mention real quick just because like that's another complication with trying to do the bubble. But uh, anyway, what were you going to say? Let's see. I was going to say... The Surge? I was talking about the Surge. Was no, that? Mutineers. Mutineers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mutineers. yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That, that's just it. Like, are like Mutineers like holding on to Pharaoh and like not letting go? It's or... possible. So that that would stink for Pharaoh, It obviously. feels like Pharaoh wants to play for New York. I think he does. Well, I think, I think that's does. probably what the problem is. Like, Mutineers like, no, we want to keep you, but Mut Florida or uh, Pharaoh's probably already said, "Well, I want to go play for, you know, New York." And his yeah. team's like, "Well, fuck, like, or and, screw and this like, guy." And it kind of gave up their leverage because, like, <laughs> they had leverage trying to trade Pharaoh to New York, yeah. and they want a better price. Yeah. But if Pharaoh's giving up his hand, saying, "I want to play for New York," mm -hmm. it makes it they have they have less leverage, yeah, in the in the negotiation. Yeah. So it's like that's kind of the 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 teeter totter debate there. Crazy. Probably with probably what's going down. Yeah. I would imagine. I mean, does that get you worried about the Mutineers roster if you end up having a Pharaoh that seems a little disgruntled? Because I feel like you don't want a disgruntled Pharaoh. True. No. I think if Pharaoh's <laughs> disgruntled, it's not good. So yeah. Mutineers yeah. are in a tough spot, I think. I agree. Yeah. I, I just agree. wish Pharaoh wanted to play for them, but he doesn't. So it's like, yeah. what do we do with this? <laughs> I yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I 100% agree. So that, that puts him in a tough spot. But uh, I don't know. Again, that's something I'm very, I mean, he seems like the the piece that needs to fall. It's It's been Pharaoh for a while now. Mm -hmm. The piece mm -hmm. that needs to fall into place. And once he does, then then the rest of the teams will really sort itself out. Yeah. Um, especially Paris and London. 
Yeah, I true. think because um, like I think there's a p- few pieces kind of like Hydra is kind of caught in that argument mm-hmm. or that debate as well. Yeah. Um, but all right, let's talk about the, the real quick. Um, let's talk about the surge and LA the LA situation real quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, because tonight going into this news, mm. um, basically there was a really so the Seattle surge said they were going to release their roster at 50k followers and then immediately they hit 50k followers because CDL Intel retweeted it mm-hmm. <laughs> they gained like a few thousand followers like yeah, instantly really quick and then their social media guy was like uh well we cannot release our roster yeah we'll, <laughs> we'll let you know but what lines up interesting with that is they tweeted that and then like a few hours later Prasini says he tweets the I'm signed officially GIF, the yeah. officially signed gif and uh, mm. we've heard these back and forth between, you know, Pristini and uh, Looney. Like they kind of on that same night. When was that? Like five days ago or so. Mm-hmm. Kind of like sulkily tweeted. Oh, yeah. Like, what was me type yeah. tweet? It, it was um, very, very depressing. A very depressing tweet from both of them. Like something really bad just happened to their roster. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of like deleted it and were like, never mind. I was just in a bad mood. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> <Seems weird. laughs> little sketch. Yeah. Like so, the the question is: Did Gunless ditch them, and then the roster fell apart, and then something happened? Like, did Gunless then come back? Who knows? Um, what's your initial? What's your initial? Yeah, yeah. What's your initial read on the Seattle surge at this point? Is Pristini on that roster? Yes, hundred percent. Yes, ninety nine percent. Okay, I think go. so. I think it's got to be like it's got to be Looney. All we've heard: Octane and Gunless and yeah. Pristini. Looney, Octane, Gunless, Pristini. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it just seems right. I don't know, but like, you don't think John that, could end up there? It's possible. <laughs> I guess if like, because like you kind of wonder if like Gunless could well, could like left, but like John was trying to get on. I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's a few different options. I feel like either mm-hmm. Gunless dipped because he thought something because there was like the weird like tease situation too mm-hmm. it's like maybe like Gunless thought he was gonna be able to go on to Optic, and so then yeah. he told him like I might be going to Optic, and yeah. then they they. They tilt tweeted. Yeah. And then that kind of went down or like, yeah, maybe it's John. Maybe, maybe New York. Everyone thought John was going to New York, but then John, but then this whole Hydra Pharaoh situation started happening. And then John was like, wait, I want to go to Seattle. And then that's what caused it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. (laughs) Rex, what do you think? Yeah. Dude, I mean, I think, I mean, we all talk about John and acting like he's going to go somewhere. I don't, if he goes somewhere, it's going to be New York or, or Seattle, I feel like. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I see him much more like on Seattle with Octane. That just seems like a decent pairing to me. Um, I don't know. Octane, Gunless, Looney, Pristini just seems like an odd squad. Again, to me it's a Rise bit. 2.0. It's mm-hmm. just Rise 2.0. I mean, you have Pristini and Pristini Octane. is Tiege and Octane is Slasher. I mean,. It's Octane the same and roles. Slash are different personalities, though. Yeah, but it's the same roles. And Pristini's like Pristini's different. Like Pristini, I think can mix in anywhere. Octane, Octane's I mean, chill. Be, we know how toxic Looney and Gunless are. So why they get problem with their rosters? They're it's because they're so vocal. Vocal. They're so vocal <laughs> that people start to not like them. Then yeah. they get booted off the team. And a person like Octane, who you know how is serious winning. he took this year, is questionable. Who's how serious he took this year is questionable. Um, kind of tells you a little bit how his personality is going to function as opposed to a person like Slasher who just gets super, super pissed. Octane didn't get pissed. He just was like, whatever. Yeah. You know? So it's like, that's not a mentality that I think gets along with but those types decent, of guys. But if they're decent, they could get really good. Like if, if they're they decent, the year, they could be great. If they the year decent, they could be really, really good by middle of the year. Yeah. But can they survive the slumps? Yeah, the biggest thing is, do they start off hot? If they start off hot, they could be incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then can Pristini take the heat? True, true. Because the heat Which, on that team will come, and it will be hot. Like when it does, it's yeah. gonna be hard to take. Like I don't I imagine Pristini's both of them together are gonna make people cry. That, so and Pristini, yeah. you know, so like, can yeah. he take the heat? Yeah. Octane, is he gonna care enough for these guys before they get super pissed? You know? Yeah. Yeah, the that, question. Is, that is really actually really interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, oh man, oh man. I mean, yeah, I, it could go either way. I think that's probably going to be the roster. Octane, so Octane, Gunless, Looney, Prasini. I'm pretty confident that's going to be the roster. Yeah. Um, But that drama was a little weird up until Prasini tweeted tonight yeah. that he signed. So yeah. 
I would imagine that's what it's going to be. Also, shout out Clay for that hat uh, tease in the yeah, background. No, that was incredible. I, I, I was going to oh, mention yeah. that. That blew up, bro. That was hilarious. Yeah. And everyone discounted it as a yeah, scuff hat. scuff. Mm. But it was <laughs> actually was a New York hat, which was hilarious. So big oh. time plays from Clay there. Yeah. On, uh, also, that is the most, that was an amazing podcast, by the way. The, uh, the Courage and Shot show with, mm. oh, with yeah, uh, Krim that and too. Clay. That mm. was incredible. The whole way through. Yeah. Like, Nade shot reminiscing with Clay and Kramer about the good old days and then talking to him about Empire and they talked yeah. about how they talked about how uh they took the pay cuts to mm. to make this yeah. roster even happen for yeah. Empire, which was awesome. And they and Krim expanded upon how he felt like he sabotaged the rest of the league with the with the four v four news mm-hmm. um in champs and it was just an awesome podcast overall. I highly recommend going and checking that out because it was dope. Yeah. Um but real quick, I want to talk about the mental joining the gorillas. Rumors slash Rumors. Maybe confirmed. I don't know. Yeah. How do you feel about this, man? So mental, the Gears of War God. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically, that what the hailed best player in Gears of War for Mul- a long time now. Multi time, like multi champion, like yeah, mm-hmm. cra- crazy good like player. Yeah, like the scump of Bo3. Yeah. And AW joining COD yeah. type situation yeah. of how good he was and how dominant he was in esports yeah. is you know announced that he's announced that he was gonna pursue. Cod, mm-hmm. and then CDL Intel said, "Sounds like he's joining the Gorillas, which is w- w- interesting." As mm-hmm. and they says as a sub, yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. that Gorillas roster currently is uh, Apathy, Vivid, uh, Assault, and Silly. Yes, rumored mm-hmm. roster. Well, of course, rumored. But at this point, yeah, everything we've heard that sounds like it's going to be confirmed. Yeah. Um, but the whole drama which is why we're talking about it, is that a lot of the elite AMs were pretty annoyed mm. that Mental was getting a substitute spot this quickly. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, hey, you know, with so many players losing their jobs, mm. that Mental, a guy who's never played one event in COD, mm-hmm. was getting a spot over, like, guys like Detain or, yeah. you know, insert successful amateur player here. Yeah. Uh, mm. Rex, I want to hear your opinion first. I mean, what do you think about this? It's two things. Gorillas, it's just a good, you know, marketing move for them. They pick up this guy. They can, you know, we picked up the Gears of War guy who's supposed to be really good. And then they're going to have him in challenges. And plus they have a team where it's like, if he does end up being pretty good, they can sub him in. And you can't discredit, like, he won championships in other games. We've seen it work. Not with Gears of War, which is the way it plays is different than COD. But, you know, if you're good at... One game, usually you're going to be good at other games as well. Um, but I I mean, I get why they did it. I feel do feel bad for the other AMs who put more like their life and soul into it, but I get it. Yeah. Yeah. There's Sam? a potential upside. You're not taking a lot of risk, and it's good mm-hmm. branding. It's exactly what it is. It is, this is a low risk, high reward move. Like, this mm-hmm. is like free money, basically. Like, yeah. You're, you're going to get him for cheap. See, mm-hmm. cheap. I, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm surprised. Th- th- again, there's, there's this weird, like, under circle type situation where teams can ma- would have the potential to make money off of players. Mm-hmm. And, like, this is what happens in soccer. So, I- if you're familiar out there who aren't familiar with, like, European soccer, how it works is basically small teams sign high upside signings, like a team like, in like a mid tier team in Italy mm-hmm. will sign like a really high upside player who they can hope to flip to Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester United for like 50 million euros one day. You know, mm-hmm. that's kind of how like this works out. And yeah. that's how those mid tier teams make money is by flipping those, those high upside guys to the mm-hmm. great teams one day. Mm-hmm. And so like, I feel like in COD eventually that's kind of how it's going to end up being like, yeah. I, I, at least I would imagine. Yeah. Like where, you know, the lower end teams are taking risks mm-hmm. on hopefully one day very talented players to then flip to yeah. make a profit or have mm. them dominate one day yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, I, actually is very good point, actually. Yeah. And like you can't say like he hasn't proven himself. He's proven himself. Like he's as a competitor. As a competitor, he is like he's in it to win it. He's a good He's elite. He's he's elite. Like I get I do un- I understand the frustration. If you know if you if you've been in the AM grinding the the pit for a couple of years now, but at the same time, like you have to respect 
someone who's who's, who's right. at the very top. That level of dominance we've, yeah. we've only seen in esports with a few players, yeah. and they've been the greatest players. Yeah. And they've translated Call of Duty. Yeah, the guys who dominated at certain points in Halo mm-hmm. came over to COD, mm-hmm. and they were really freaking good. Really like Hook, Shotzi. Yeah, mm-hmm. formal in his time. Mm-hmm. Crim six even played Crim six Halo. played Halo. Yeah, um, and we've seen it in other esports as well. Like and like again, people in Overwatch who are really good think that they can make it work Play in Valorant. Valorant. Yeah. CS go and to Valorant as well. CS go to Valorant as well. So yeah. the, the transfer with that competitive mentality, I think, is there, yeah. and that's why I think this makes sense overall. Yeah. And it sucks for, again. It really does suck for the mm-hmm. elite amateurs who've been working so hard in the COD scene. Yeah. But for the gorillas, come on, this is a shoe in. This it, is it, an amazing move. It yeah. really is. So props but to them for. I have no. Nope. I don't know for sure if Mental's going to be great at Call of Duty, though, either. Oh, of course. But, Gears but, of War is a third-person shoot. Like, it's just yeah. not. Halo yeah. and COD, they're first-person shooters. It Agreed. works. Agreed. Gears yeah. is just a different de- game, you know? But, yeah, it's about the movement and the, yeah. the craziness of Gears. Yeah. Yeah. is insane. But, but that's the brilliant part of it, is that if he sucks, he's he's a substitute. No sweat off their back. Yeah. Yeah, it, I agree. It, yeah, it's just I agree. a great move. So... I feel like that's almost all of our roster mania news. Yeah. I mean, obviously for a little while here, do you want to talk about the Cold War Alpha? Kind of as our, well, excuse me. Touch on it. Kind of as our segment two here. Talk a little bit about the Alpha. I mean, unfortunately for us three, Mm -hmm. I was the only one that played the Alpha. (laughs) How did that happen, boys? Yeah. Yeah. PC. Unfortunate. (laughs) Sam had no time this weekend and Rex doesn't even have a PS4. So (laughs) I watched. But luckily, guys. Luckily, guys, I put in like 15, 16 hours into it this weekend. I was grinding. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, um, I was watching streams too. So, off and But on. I think the one thing that I want to focus on is kind of the skill-based matchmaking discussion, at least yeah. off the rip, because yeah. it's very relevant to gaming and Call of Duty, and we all have opinions on that yes. for sure. Um, so real quick, before we even talk about Cold War itself, obviously in the beta, there was a very strong skill-based matchmaking, and I felt it even off the rip. Um, I was streaming my first few games, and I dominated my first like three games. I'm like... Mm-hmm. Yo, am I nasty? Mm-hmm. And then I got put in the grinder. <laughs> I was in the mix for like maybe about an hour. I was like, man, this is a sweat fest. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, and then that's when I started seeing the Scobies matchmaking post on Twitter. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, there it is. That makes sense. There it is. That makes sense. Um, but okay, what are your opinions on Scobies matchmaking as a whole? I've seen some reports about the uh, the trademarks yes. from Activision mm-hmm. and from like EA Sports and EA. like Apex mm-hmm. for how their skill based matchmaking works. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on it overall, Sam? What do you think? What are your thoughts? Yeah. So, skill based, mat- you know, matchmaking, it's it's just very broad thing, right? Like, and it's different meanings, different meanings, and all that. Here's what I'm gonna say on it. Um, I I personally believe. A, there there needs to be a ranked playlist of some sort, in, in right? Every, yeah, no, I mean obviously. Literally, in in every like esport, every shooter, if you're not putting a ranked in, like that's just dumb. And, and then so on the pub side, then the the the, right. so, the social playlist. So the ranked play should like that's where you go to sweat. Ranked is where you go to sweat. You're calling out every second, yeah. you know that kind of thing. And the other thing I want to mention real quick in COD yeah. is that it is a little bit different. Like unlike like like LOL where the pubs is basically the exact same game, you know, league play is its own. All right. You know, you know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. obviously differences with, with certain things, but yeah. it's more similar to competitive than what COD is to pubs. Like right. competitive COD is to, to pubs. Mm-hmm. And so th- it is a little bit different though in COD where like you can't just go to sweat in ranked cause you're mm-hmm. playing a, basically a whole different game. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. Yeah. I want to throw that in. But yeah, no. Um, but then in the social side, um, there i there should be some sort of skill matchmaking there to the point where it's like you're not scump had a great video on it where he was saying like he doesn't want to play the bottom 30 percent of players like, like the literal bots literal bots which that's just not fun fun for him at that point like, like if a if a, a five-year-old is playing cod yeah. or if like a 92 year old is playing COD. exactly <laughs> But at the same time, he doesn't want to sweat when he's playing social, which makes sense too. Like, why should why should anyone have to like right? You know, whatever. So every like, game, there needs to be like this like large pool of possible playlists. Like, like don't restrict the player to like exactly their their skill level or higher. Yeah, like, there needs to be a wider range in social to where it's like you you can be more comfortable leaning back, not leaning forward you know ha- having a brew or something like that and like 
Like, mm. I don't know. Like that. That's my thoughts on it. Yeah. Like, I I think there should be some parameters on social where you're not playing. You know, I mean, bots. Modern Warfare's was the most extreme we've seen in a mm-hmm. COD up to date. Where yeah. like, I mean, I have friends on my. I mean, I have a massive friends list of people just because of playing with like the community and, yeah. and doing community tournaments and stuff. And like, there's some really really good players in the community. I remember yeah. in Bo4 there was like tons of guys who had over two KDs. Mm-hmm. And in Modern Warfare, I checked my friends list and like. No one had over a two KD, mm-hmm. like, and in in my Bo4 friends list, there was probably like twenty people had over a two KD, yeah. like that is insane, pretty crazy, you know, honestly, with mm. modern warfare and how the yeah. how that plays out, like it, there is that that in itself is evidence of like yeah. significant skill with matchmaking. But yeah. uh, um, Rex, where are you at with it? Okay, I mean, so I guess I kind of have a lot to say on this base, like yes. I mean, skill-based matchmaking should be in to an extent, like that bottom 30%, like Sam said, like, you shouldn't have to, like, these are people, like I said, with the one-eared headset, big flat screen TV, and they're going to play for, like, this is their first three year or four matches. Yeah, like, yeah. They, they're, they're just having fun. They're not, you know, they should not be playing against, like, me or any of us, because we're just going to, you know, absolutely just destroy them, and it's going to ruin their time. And yeah. I, it also is a question of how, like, COD is an old game at this point. So if you're expecting Black Ops 2 pubs, like, people are just better now than they were back then. True, true. So, like, I feel like maybe, because I don't know the math of how the skill-based matchmaking is working. I don't know how much it's, like, changed since then. Yeah, a lot. (laughs) But you have to imagine that players are just generally getting better in the world. So when we're going to a pub, people are just going to be better than they were five or six years ago. Um. Yeah, What's and really like that, that range of thing. that range of talent gets bigger and bigger as years goes along. Exactly. There's guys, there's guys who just have hopped on COD for the first time in their lives, like mm-hmm. a 12 year old who's hopping on a first person shooter for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's there's the scumps of the world who've been playing literally professionally mm-hmm. as long mm-hmm. as that kid's been alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like people are just better at the game now in general. Like just the population is just better than it was back in Black Ops Two. And it's just going to keep getting better as long as they keep making game, you know? So, yeah. but then also ranked would solve this whole thing because at least if they display a rank, you go to a pub playlist, at least it's what they do in Overwatch, what they do in League, you can see where the people you're playing against, what rank they're at. What if there was a um, ranked pubs playlist? Peterson. I mean, I mean that's that could basically be. what they do in these other games is that every, like these other competitive games, they have a skill-based matchmaking as well in their quick play, in their pubs. Right. But th- it's just a broader range. Where it's like uh, a diamond player is going to be matched with like masters to, you know, platinum players or even maybe even gold a little bit, like higher yeah. tier gold. It's crazy. So it's just a range is bigger, but like it's a big difference between diamond and gold, but they're not going to go with like a bronze person with these people. Um, yeah. So I think I'll be honest. If- Rank in, comes out, it maybe would give us a better idea of what's actually yeah, happening I with agree. skill-based matchmaking. In, I actually have a bigger problem with rank with skill-based matchmaking in in battle royales than I do in in uh like multiplayer. Hmm. And because in the battle royales, like there's enough RNG element, like the bad player could win. Mm-hmm. Like still, like he has the RPG, he's sitting in a bush in the last circle, he could still kill the the best player in the game mm-hmm. potentially. You know, mm-hmm. like. That best player in the game, if you're playing a pub on on firing range, that best player in the game is going to obliterate the mm-hmm. the guy who's never played COD before. But there's a yeah. world where in in a battle royale, he shoots the RPG and kills him. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, like so. Um, I do have a little bit more. So that's that was my first first argument. Yeah. The second thing is that there is the weird formula aspect of it, which I agree with you, Rex. The, the formula has changed a ton with how skills skill based matchmaking works. I think the, the skill based matchmaking that a lot of people have in mind is kind of like the original, the original creation of skill based matchmaking. Nowadays, it's it's a lot different. It's like almost rigging matches. Like it, like literally, you have every so often you get put into an easy lobby to make you think that you dominate, mm-hmm. and then yeah. then you get put into the sweat lobbies where they're playing you against your similar competition, and then you get put into a lobby where you're the only good player on your team so then you have to carry your team and then you have the screenshot on twitter of dude i look at this you know mm-hmm. and it's like it's just and like everybody has that friend who's like thinks they're incredible but because of skill matchmaking like 
you like you know they're not incredible but like mm-hmm. because of skill based matchmaking they think they are yeah and that's the danger of skill based matchmaking i think in video games is that like it's so hard to scale yourself against other people if you're only playing against people that you think like overall you're like dude i have a i have a good kd like i, th- mm-hmm. I think i'm pretty good at this but like it's impossible to tell mm-hmm. because of skill based matchmaking yeah and like that's a big time problem in my mind where like you know and you can't just go to a basketball court and like, like you can't just be like, oh, I'm good at, I'm good at basketball. Mm-hmm. And then you go to, you go to your local YMCA and you get smoked. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I suck. But mm-hmm. in, in COD, you could never, you, but you could potentially never get out of your bubble. Mm-hmm. And then you just think you're insane. Yeah. What? Also, but that's been happening too- for a while. People have been thinking they're good at shooters for a really long time when they're not actually good at shooters. I mean, true. I, I don't agree. think it's anything yeah. new. It's yeah. not new, but it's getting worse with, with mm-hmm. how, with how the skill based matchmaking works. Like, um, EA Sports's skill based matchmaking that's got, what, got leaked. Me, that, yeah, which which like that yeah. that seems like almost like criminal. And Apex and it's Apex where it's actually criminal. Yeah, like and like it, <laughs> we have a buddy named Buddy Tay. Shout out T Hands. Yeah, and he's really good at Apex. I mean, mm-hmm. he's he's been like an Apex predator at at one point, and uh, he it is unbelievable when he solo queues how bad his teammates are mm-hmm. every time. Yeah, like literally Apex nerfs him every game with mm-hmm. how trash his teammates are yeah. and like he says is actually like he can't even play pubs without a full party of three here's the thing everybody says that when they're playing ranked if they lose that's what they always like it's no, but the that's constant the thing. excuse of like my teammates no, 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 are bad no, no, no. and I'm good that's, that's what point, everybody though. says but, but all the, the trademark time. is out though the like, trademark for the skill based matchmaking that is the point of the skill based matchmaking is they make you think that you're getting costed which you are getting costed by the teammates because they want the teammates the bad players to get carried by the good player to make them feel like they're playing better. And like that is literally part of EA Sports' trademark for their skill based matchmaking. Mm-hmm. But I think it's in like a lot of games. Like exactly. Pretty much every game at this point has it. And it's criminal. It's literally it like it literally the point of it is to help you is to throw matches, is to make put you in basically impossible to win situations where you and then and then every so often they throw you the bone and they put you in a bot lobby where you're smoking kids to make you think you're godly so that you mm-hmm. keep playing. And it's like it's not even like you're even you're it's like how good you are you have no control over how good you are. Mm-hmm. There, because it's all yeah. about the 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 lobby you're getting into. Yeah. It's criminal. You, it pisses me off. You need I to mean, be able to play in the majority of the player base. Like you need to be able to play the majority of the player base where like if you're playing for 2 hours. Yeah. You need to be playing like all skill, like again, not not the bottom fifteen percent or something. Fifteen percent, not like the 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 high one percent if you're not good enough or, or not very know, often at least whatever. But like, like like Josh was saying, like there needs to be more of a comparable um, sample size where you're not just in this bubble. Yeah, and like you, there there's no way to compare anything. Right, like, and this is why like during the year, this makes so much this this uh, this whole conversation sh- I think sheds a lot of light on like so Drifter and I think Prestigious Key did like skill based matchmaking, uh, or was it exclusive Ace? Did I think it was, it was exclusive, Ace. exclusive Ace? Um, okay. did uh, like research on skill based matchmaking during Modern Warfare, and they they ca- they found inconclusive evidence for skill based matchmaking, mm-hmm. but now with the new formula that was released to like the with the the patent, they're like. This that makes so much more sense for the data that we are finding because we weren't they weren't finding the data that it matches you with people always the same skill as you, mm-hmm. but that it actually matches you. Like you're because half the time you're just gonna get costed, so the rest of the people on your team suck. Mm-hmm. But that's like kind of the point. Yeah, and so like there was inconclusive evidence of like the site the type of skill based matchmaking that they were looking for, but it's because they were looking for the wrong type of skill based matchmaking. Yeah. So overall, I, I I mean, overall, it makes me not want to play pubs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it makes me only want to ever play ranked play. And uh, <laughs> like, it just actually just pisses me off. Yeah. And in Battle Royales, I feel like it's just absolutely criminal. Rex, I feel like you're, you're buzzing over there to, to talk. I'm just not so quick to jump on this bandwagon. Like, I, I d- it's not like skill-based matchmaking needs to be totally removed. Like, it just doesn't make sense to do that. And I don't know. I just like have not. I just hear a lot of talk about it, and like I just want to like physical. I, I don't know how to even describe it. I'm not totally like on that bandwagon yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm it's holding not, it's out not like my you've been judgments. Pubs the past two years, though. It's, 
But I, it's just, I just because I think of other games other than COD, and then, like, and Overwatch is, like, the big one that I got really, really into, and I did that competitively, and then I went, and I play in pubs. I'm still playing people around somewhat similar skill level, like, either, like, in Plat or, like, in Masters or whatever, and, it like, and if we weren't doing that, I would have just destroyed people in, like, goal, like, I would have just destroyed them, you know? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, but like if you're playing again, like that's the point of pubs. It's, this isn't like some unique thing. I think to COD, this isn't. I don't know how new this is. I don't think we're saying it's unique. I think we're just discussing of whether it, should it, it be a, it, it, it is how extreme should it be? Yeah, that that's what we're trying to discuss here. Yeah. Is like, how extreme should it be? Yeah, like like you know, like we we're saying, like in in Apex, which is different than COD, they the their their system is seems to be like just. Like, for example, Rigged. when I, me I just, and Um the Kid played, me and Isaac, we played mm-hmm. Apex together, just me and him. Mm-hmm. We won three of our first four games. Mm-hmm. Then we right. joined with Tay, who was an Apex, ex-Apex Predator, mm-hmm. and we got obliterated. <laughs> we were getting smoked every lobby. We It took us three hours to get to win one game mm-hmm. after winning three of our first four games when me and, and Isaac were just playing. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and like... That is crazy. And like in COD, I know for a fact I feel the same thing. Like if I'm playing pubs myself and I join some of my my buddies who I know aren't as good, but like there's like my casual friends mm-hmm. and uh, they're just like casual COD players, I dominate in those lobbies. Mm-hmm. I'm right. dominating. And then if I join my my if I join buddies who are gods at pubs, I know I'm getting into tough lobbies. Like you can just feel it. It, it is definitely there. But you get you don't really know what kind of lobby you're gonna get into, I guess. So like, there's no consistency in what the lobby is gonna be. Maybe that's people's issue. I I don't know. Well, the biggest issue is just it feels like they... because you are getting easy lobbies, but then you're also getting hard lobbies. So if everything was completely open, isn't that what what should happen anyways? No, I think my biggest issue is that it doesn't feel like how you play matters. Like it doesn't matter if you're good or bad. At the end of the day, you're just gonna be decent. Like, because the skill is match matchmaking makes sure that you're not always dominating. It makes sure that you're not always sucking. But like, I want my skill to reflect the outcome each and every lobby. If I feel like I'm cracked and playing well that night, I shouldn't suddenly start suffering playing against gods just because I'm cracked that night. You know, <laughs> unless I'm playing a ranked playlist, because that's the point. Right. I think if ranked playlist came out, it probably prevents a lot of this from happening because then you can see what other people's ranks are in your lobby and maybe people will be surprised like oh wow i'm you know a, a masters and this guy's in silver and i'm he's killing me you know and it's just like yeah oh. you know as i'm just having a bad day you know because you don't I mean, know when I it's definitely... a bad day or like when it's not you don't know how good these people actually are maybe you're playing against people who actually are bad but you're just having a bad day or like you know yeah, I mean, like, even in Modern people Warfare, people are just better now than they were. Like, you're gonna like, get killed. Like, like again, even in Modern Warfare, um, like I've gone to lobbies and then like you play with buddies that I know aren't aren't as good as me. Like mm-hmm. I know, but we join in and we play, and like they're doing about as well as me because the lobbies are balanced that way to make sure that they don't get smoked. Like hmm. in a lot of ways, obviously, I mean, like I'm still overall long, over the long term playing better than them, which because yeah. the lobbies that's how it balances out. But like. It should be more severe than it is because the skill-based matchmaking is there. I mean, I know for a fact I've experienced skill-based matchmaking. I think all of us, mm-hmm. at least to an extent, can say we have. Definitely. And like, for sure. It should be tuned down. There should so be when less. did we start noticing it? What was the first game that had it? Um, people have been talking about it for a while. I would say people really started talking about it people in People were saying in Black AW. Ops 2 it had it. Yeah. people. I think some people talked about it in Black Ops 2 and Ghosts. Um, but like... That if it's like we never had a problem with it then very much it's just now like I, my, my i just well, it's i just have I my the hesitations battle royales, of like the maybe battle royales just is where it's outrageous maybe the ba- like i i don't really play battle royales like i don't know but i think it's it seems outrageous. like it's been around for a while and people are just now kind of hopping on this bandwagon and like i don't know man it's how much different is it maybe the player base is just better in general I mean, yes, but there's also there should be in continually like new bred players that are just joining COD, you know, and like it just it just feels like the majority of the time 
the veterans aren't finding those guys in the lobbies. And like, is that the worst thing ever? No. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I just feel like, again, I agree with you. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, I think we're kind of going in circles now. Yep. But like at the end of the day, yeah. If you're playing in pubs, you should be playing against a pretty large range of players. Mm-hmm. If I'm a 50 percentile player, I should be playing against 15 to 50 and 50 to 90. Or like, yeah. you know, 10 to 50 mm-hmm. and 50 to 90. Yeah. Not 30 to 60 or mm-hmm. 40 to 60, you know? Yeah. So th- that is just kind of where I'm at with it. They need to they need to loosen the effects of skill-based matchmaking. There still needs to be some of it. I think it does overall it help the gaming experience in the big picture and it helps sell games so companies are gonna want to do it yeah but i don't know that's kind of where i'm at with it yeah man those were uh, those are like arbitrary numbers what do those even mean like i don't like i don't know well well uh, well he was saying like like a specific percentile like if, if you're taking the 100 percent of, of the community <laughs> like he's saying like where he was at was like a middle if i was of a of middle the of the range player yeah I, I should be experiencing the 10th percentile to the 90th percentile of players mm-hmm not what it feels like right now is the 40th percentile of the 60th percentile mm-hmm. of players. Yeah. He's just saying like, like just, but how, just, just explain how, the parameters. How good are the 10th percentile players? Like you can, you can normalize it's like it. A, it's like a curve. It's just a yeah. standard curve. Just like a in standard right. bell curve. Yeah. In any math. Like, yeah. you know, so I don't know. Again, we're at, the yeah. end, at this point we're kind of circling, yeah. but that was kind of like the last thing I want to talk about. Let's just real quick. Cold war thoughts on the game after seeing a lot of gameplay now. Um, What's the thing you're most excited about? What's the thing you're least excited about? Rex, fire away. Uh, ask the question again. What's the thing you're most excited about? What's the thing you're least excited about? Rex, For Cold fire War? away. <laughs> yeah. Cold War. I mean, I'm excited to see like what new the new movement mechanic stuff. I hope I'm really hoping that they bring kill streaks back into competitive play. Yeah, I want that so 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 I so that's my bad. Biggest worry at this point. It has to happen, or like. They're just shooting themselves in the foot. Like, you got to have it. It's so exciting. Yeah. Um, that's like again, my number one thing. Again, watching the throwback tournament today, I love the streaks that were back, you know? And I'm like, mm. oh, like Sims, like, yo, I'm, I'm a 200 off, 200 off. I got to play for streaks, play for streaks. And like, you know, those streaks matter and they mean something and they're yeah. exciting and interesting and how they mm. use them and their strategy involved with, with playing for them. I like them. And I agree. That's a big word for me. What's something, what is something you like to see? Something I would like, I mean. Or that you like seeing. I like seeing. I like. I think like the guns. I think the guns are couldn't end up being balanced. I think. I don't. I think it'll be good. Yeah, they were cool. They were cool. I, I think the pacing you know. will be better. I don't think it's gonna be like bash your head in. I don't think it's gonna be too slow either. I think it maybe will hit that sweet spot. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Sam. Yeah. I I really like the look and what I think the feel the guns where I couldn't feel the guns myself, but like. The guns look pretty cool, look pretty fun. Um, that's what I'm, I'm most excited for. Um, what I'm most worried about still is maps. Maps, yeah. Or just, I, I haven't they seen. They chose like color grading, like the brightest map they could find. Yeah. Then they had Miami, the darkest map they yeah. could find. And then a gray scaled Moscow map yeah. right in the middle. So so it's like, <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm sure they're going for like a, like the most range they had. And like, I'm, I'm sure they're not showing their like competitive maps yet, but. I can't Hopefully like not. maps just make or break a game. Really? Honestly. And those were not. I mean, Moscow was the only one that I could maybe see, but again, yeah. there was so much space in that mm-hmm. map, like at the backs on both sides. It was like it was just like absurd amounts yeah. of space at the backs of the map, which again, in hard point, maybe that doesn't matter that much, depending on where the hard points are. But yeah. um I was sad we didn't get to see control. Mm-hmm. Um because yeah. we got to see control in the in like the little pre-test, like the, yeah. the showcase. Yeah. And then we didn't get to play control in the alpha. Yeah. I'm like, bruh, what? I would assume the beta would have control. Yeah, the beta will have control. That. I agree. They're probably yeah. saving it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. the, the those are my two things. No, well, they had control in the alpha. Not, Did they not? No, you couldn't, we couldn't play it. You but, could play hard but point. The, but the alpha before that, they had control. That's what I'm saying, in the reveal. But that's why in I was reveal. sad yeah. that we didn't oh, get to play okay. it. I got it, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, so hard point, I was excited to see it. Um, the spawns were obviously very mo- significantly more consistent than Modern Warfare. They, I think, again, I think we're forgetting that CODs in the past have had spawn problems at the beginning of games. It just happens. Mm-hmm. They don't have mm-hmm. enough. They don't have enough mass to test, and that's what the alpha's for. But again, having hardpoint in the alpha is so exciting. Yeah. 
compared in Modern Warfare, where they, we, weren't, we weren't even sure if we were going to have it at launch. I know. That's, <laughs> yeah, just, have to, yeah. that's so yeah. weird to think about. So, like, and the first version of Hardpoint had, like, 400 Hardpoints. Yeah. So, it's it just random. Outrageous. So, yeah. th- that, overall, very excited about that. Hardpoint was so fun to play again, like, in, in a very significantly more consistent atmosphere. And uh, I was, it was just, it was a blast. So, I was excited about that. I agree with you. The score streaks, a little worrying. Um, I don't think the re the not resetting on death, uh, score like idea behind score streaks would work with competitive. I mean, Mm-mm. every player will have a lightning strike every game, guaranteed. Probably multiple, probably yeah. multiple, and I don't know how that makes any sense. Yeah, hopefully I mean, they change it. Yeah, like, make it so it's an option to switch it. There's probably have to be a competitive setting for that, which I mean. You know, I don't mm-hmm. love having like big mechanics like that being different with hard point versus or ver- competitive versus pubs. Yeah. But I mean, we there's no way there's no yeah. way it's going to be competitive if we're going to have streaks like that in in competitive at all. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I don't see how it's possible unless they're changing the prices of the streaks to make them hard to get. Mm-hmm. And then but then even then what I don't like about it is that you can only get them at the end of games. Mm-hmm. And so like how it basically worked was like you would play you know, the first half of the game with zero streaks in the game at all. Mm-hmm. And then the second half, it's just streaks galore, yeah. you know, which is just didn't feel yeah. the, the, the timing felt weird. I didn't like it at all. So uh, that was my biggest worry. I didn't like the streaks. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, other thoughts of the game. I agree with you. The maps weren't ideal either. Uh, ground war was really fun. The, the ship map was dope. I really liked how ground war played and the Uzi is amazing. So I right now, right now yeah. mm-hmm. gun meta, at least of right now, again, we have like half, what, half the guns in the game mm-hmm. and half the attachments unlocked. So things yeah. can change. Um, but the Uzi in like close to mid range was incredible and the best gun, mm-hmm. which was surprising, I think, uh, because everyone thought the a- the 74U was going to be the best. But yeah. dude, the AK or the, the Uzi was nasty. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you uh, with mm-hmm. the right attachments. So that was fun. But uh, I don't know. ARs were a little underwhelming. Um, at this point, it feels like a SMG forward game. Yeah, but it, that's kind of what COD has been yeah. lately, all things considered. Obviously, BO4 was a little bit different with uh, how dominant the Maddox and the ICR were, but there doesn't seem to be that type of gun at this point in the game. So we'll see. But uh, do you have anything else to say about Black Ops Cold War before we move on to the end of the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> to the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see more. I think it's gonna be. A, we we can make it a good. The beta year. is not that far out. I yeah. mean, it's like what two weeks ish away. I think, right? so. I think so. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Um, but all right, guys, that's the podcast, baby. All things considered, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe if you guys enjoyed it. Leave a co- leave a review on Apple Podcasts and a comment on YouTube if you guys enjoy the podcast. But as always, guys, I'm your boy Savage Elite. To my right is Bash on Scorpio Three. To my far right is Rex Shady Nero, and this has been the best of three quality esports podcast. We will see you next time. Yeah.